None of that. For a year? For over a year. Okay. I've been in a separation. From who? From my wife and family. What's your wife's name? Ruby. Ruby. When was the last time you saw Ruby? The last time I saw her yeah. was um, the 18th of. of this month. We met to, she requested me to sign over vehicles or the titles to the vehicles, the vehicle that she drives that were all in my name. When's the last time you physically saw Russell or Eve? Um, the day that I moved out, July 24th, 2022. 24th of 2022? Or In July 25th, July 25th. So it's my understanding that, that at least home here in, in Kayenta and Ivan's, have you been to that home? No. You've not been to that home? Uh, no, I don't know. I don't know what anything that's been going on. Like this is good, man. Like I would love to be able to help you out with this, and like I'm seeing the light at the end of the tunnel because I'm I'm unaware of your involvement in in what's really going on. So for you to say that you're unaware of the status of your kids kind of makes I know that sounds kind of crummy to you, but it sounds kind of good to me. Like who lives in that home with your is it ex-wife? Is it currently a separated wife? Like, who lives in that home with your children? To be honest, I don't know. I, I know that she's there with um, four of the children and our two older children have moved out. They're, they're not at your home in Springville? Uh, and I'm not trying to where, trip you up. I can see you're hesitant to talk to me. I understand that. Well, where where I live? No, yeah. I haven't seen them for over a year. Okay. That's tough. I can only imagine how that feels when I got kids and not seen them for that long. That, that would tear a terrible piece of my heart out. Do have age to drive? Does she drive? I don't know. Okay. Like I said, I don't, I don't, nothing is going on in so, their lives or anything going on. How did you find out that you needed to come here to 55 North Main Street? I received a message that I needed to come pick up my kids from the police department in Highlands. And who was that message from? Uh, well, I'd prefer not to say right now. It would just help us a lot. I'm trying to figure out who reached out to you because it makes sense that that would happen. I'm just not aware of anyone who did that from our department. Right. And, and I'm not comfortable saying right now who reached out to me. Okay. Okay. So, you haven't seen any of your kids in over a year, you said? That's correct. And then, how old last time you saw her? How old is she now? Fifteen. She's sixteen. Okay. And then when all the kids left, Ruby took all of them? Um, yes, yeah, she stayed in the house and I moved up. Okay. And did you ever try to reach out to the kids, drop by the home, or no. was there? I honored the no separation boundary that we agreed to. So what there was no your separation? Contact boundary, excuse me. Did you have a no contact order in place? Order? No, this was between my wife and my so, what did Ruby ask of you when you separated? What did she ask of me? Did she ask you not to contact the kids? Ruby invited me to leave the home mm -hmm. while I um, thought about the, the choices that I've made in my life and the way that I've treated her. Okay. And so I left. And how long had you and Ruby been married before? We were married in 2000. So about 22 years? Uh, when we separated, we were going on 22 years. Yes. Okay. And during your marriage, how was, how was disciplining your kids? How would you discipline your kids? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to answer that question. Okay.
That's fine. No. Have, have you been since separated or since they lived here in the city of Ivins? Um, have you communicated with your wife regarding like discipline with your kids or their care or their physical well-being? No. So is she doing this on her own and just telling you how your kids are? She's not telling me anything about the kids. Who's this? Who's this uh, female Jody that your wife lives with? Do you do you know a female named Jody? She is a, a therapist and a life coach. I know, and she's. Do you respect her? Uh, do I respect her? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think she's a very honest, truthful you, person. Yes. Okay. You place value on Jody. I don't know what that means. Like, do you do you do you value what she says and, and how she? Treats is your wife a client of hers? Is your wife a partner of hers? Is your wife a roommate with her? If your kids are living in her house, is what I'm trying to say. I'm not aware of that, but I know that they've been in business for the last year filming. Who's they? Ruby and Jody. They Ruby film. And Jody, you think they business? film podcasts and. So every week a podcast goes up and I listen to it. And <laughs> What's the name of it? Uh, connections with an X. Like C O N. C O N N E X I O N S. Yeah. And now I do you support them in that role in doing that and having. Do I support them in the business? Yeah, like do you, do you support them and think that what they're doing is a good thing or? Yeah, I support their business efforts. I think it's a good thing. Are you involved with their business efforts, or no? Okay. So just Ruby and Jody. No okay. in the business. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And were you involved in the eight passengers account with your family? Um. Yes. I was in the videos, and if that's what you mean. I briefly learned about this two hours ago. <laughs> so, did Ruby more so do? the videos for the family. Mm -hmm. And how long did you guys do that for? Uh, she started the channel in 2015. And as far as, as I'm aware, from the time I left, the last video she uploaded was towards the end of 2021. Okay. And I, but I, again, I'm not aware of anything she's done since our separation. I don't visit the passengers anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> chapter of your life that's gone? It, it, it's a past chapter, yeah. So how do you and Ruby communicate? Just through text, phone call? Through text, and if there's anything considered an emergency, we agree to we would communicate through a phone call. Okay, and do you know her phone number off the top of your head? Uh, the top of my head. Uh, <laughs> no. Okay. No worries. So, how often would you guys communicate while she was down here? Well, I don't know how often or long she was down here. We've communicated maybe four times in 2023 since January. So are you aware of how she disciplines the kids or how she handles no. the kids with behavioral issues or anything like that? No. So you're unaware of how she does that? Yes. Okay. Are you aware of the physical condition of your children? No. No. I'm, I've chosen to trust my wife with the children. That was part of the agreement of our separation is that you allow her to physically provide for the needs of the child that are just removed from that? I mean, you pay support. I know this is personal questions, but... No, yes, my job is to financially provide for the I'm just trying to figure out like, how, how much of a role do you play in the caretaking of specifically... Is it I, I pay the bills. Okay. With my, my job, I provide the money, goes into a shared bank account, and that's my only involvement. Okay. 
Um, like, there's a whole bunch of things I want to talk to you about, but I, I still can't get over the fact that someone notified you to come here to pick up your kids. My guess is, was that, was that uh, Jody? No, I'm not going to answer that question. Okay. All, all I'll say is... Well, you, Someone you said you trusted her. her. You said that you think she's not as I asked you if you placed value on her, but you, you obviously. She is an honest, I know her to be an honest and a trustworthy individual. And so, yeah, I trust her. And um, I received a communication that. And so I left immediately from my job and drove down here. That's all I know. I've come to pick up my kids and to take them home with me. Do you have any, is there a custodial paperwork that says that you're like a... There's, there's no custodial paperwork denying you of rights, correct? Uh, there's no custodial paperwork at all. Period. So, so the kids are yours? They are mine. Okay. Yeah, yes. I mean, this wasn't just a verbal agreement between my wife and I when we said mm -hmm. last year. Well, what questions do you have? Oh, I want to know what's going on and why I was asked to come down and pick up my two kids. Well, and we a lot of that kind of hinges on who asked you because if we had been the one, like. I'm, I'm not going to say you fit, but I'm, I'm confident a cop didn't call you because we wouldn't have wanted you down here at this point in our investigation. So, having said that, I, I think it's time we, we be honest with you, right? Sure. No, and, and I didn't lie. You're sure, a, someone contacted me, but I don't want to say what You said someone from your office, but okay. Uh, well, I don't recall saying someone from my office. Our office. Like, that's, no. that's someone, that's yeah, that's so that's we don't know who called you. So right. if we knew who called you, then we could help you. It would make more sense. But. Well, I don't know the legal ramifications of implicating individuals who contacted me. And so without a lawyer here, I don't want to answer that question. That's okay. I but you're, you want to know specifics of the case, which we can't share right now because it's under investigation. So, I see. Yeah. So we would like to ask questions about where you found out, but we'll respect that if you don't want to share that information. But I am curious, when you guys had the previous Eight Passengers YouTube channel, you guys got a lot of heat for neglect and child abuse. A lot of people commented those things on there. Why were they commenting those things? That's a good question. Um, we... Uh, we had a son who was acting out in very selfish behavior. Just Chad, or yes, yeah, just Chad? was Chad. And you know, none of this is strange or odd. You could get on YouTube and find out all sorts of stuff on this. It's like a double-edged sword. Yeah, the question is, what do you believe, right? There, yeah. there was even an article written in. Um, Newsweek magazine in 2020 on it, and or news was it Newsweek? No, Business Insider, where we were interviewed and, and we were pretty straightforward and we talked about it and we shared our piece in that. Basically, it boils down to he was being um, very cruel and mean to his siblings that he shared a room with. And so we removed him from the room. And we said, you can sleep anywhere you want. Sleep on the couch, sleep on the pull-out bed, sleep on the floor for all we care, but you're not sleeping in that room with your brother. Um, he chose to sleep on a bean bag. So nine months later, he had made a lot of changes in his life. And he was ready to, and, and we had moved by that time. And so we had a new house, and he was ready to move into his own bedroom. Made a video about it. And in the video, he mentioned something of the effect of, I've been sleeping for nine months on a beanbag. And that is what all the uproar was about. What did you guys do to help, like, with his behavioral issues? Is that 
Is that something you and Ruby talked about together? Is mm -hmm. and then did you? Helping you discover yourself and fix behavioral issues and things like that. Is that is that something you and Ruby sought out to help correct, like some of the things? Yes. And, okay. And I supported it, and so together we held boundaries for our son Chad to support his choosing honest and responsible choices. And when he chose honest and responsible choices consistently is when he began to get his privileges back. And that was that was, <laughs> well, that was the other word, right? Yeah. And, and so um, but yes, um, through two thousand with him because I'm honoring the no contact separation boundary with, uh, that I agreed to with my wife, but I understand that he's um, 18, living on his own, somewhere in Provo, and working and supporting himself. What other kids went down to visit Jody? What other kids? Yeah, did you send any of the other kids down to oh, spend time with send, Jody? We didn't send Chad down to spend time with Jody. They would meet on Zoom. Ah, okay. uh, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, we That's were in spring stuff. Uh -huh. Well, even in 2019, we would shoot and meet with So when did Ruby and Jody, to your knowledge, like decide to collaborate, come together and mesh lives because that's what it, that's what's happened well the, they decided to start a business in 2021 so while you while you and ruby were together yes okay yeah and but there were you know at that period it was pretty nebulous i i don't know what's it, that word mean <laughs> it was there was just a lot of talk and, and okay. everyone, like solid plans it was Let's start by, you know, doing podcasts together, and, and then that's all I know. I know that uh, they published a book together recently, you can find it on Amazon, it's not a secret. Um, was business thriving, like life was good between those two? Uh, well, not that I was aware. Well, at some point, and again, I'm not digging into your life, but I'm trying to understand this, at some point, we they took, they kick you out. Well, when you talk about a business, you know, thriving uh -huh. in terms of business and money, when, when we stopped eight passengers on YouTube, we lost 90% of our income. Mm -hmm. So to say that business was thriving, uh, in my perspective, no. Got it. I don't think it ever was after was, that. Was that part of your guys' reason for separation after you guys ended? Eight passengers? Uh, was that part of the reason? Mm -hmm. uh, I, the, the reasons are because of, of ways that I treated my wife. And, um, and some um, of my own uh, addictions that I was working through and seeking help on with, um, with uh, pornography. Thank you for sharing that. And I, yeah, I've made some wonderful progress. Like, is that something you came to the realization that you needed help and weren't doing things right? Or is that something that, like, Jody helped you guys recognize that, 
maybe Ruby needed more. I'm trying to understand her involvement in your guys' life. Um, She's my focus, so just to be honest. I understand and I, I can perceive that. Um, Jody and Ruby have a, um, a close relationship and, and Jody saw the need for me to get help. And um, frankly, I agree. I, the space um, has been exactly what I need to face you know, my own um, addictions and, and receive the support and help that I've needed. And so the space has been um, very, very good for me. Mm -hmm. So when you uh, stated that you and Ruby had this no contact that you guys just verbally agreed upon, was that an idea given by Jody that she recommended you guys have that space and not contact one another? I'm not aware of that. It, the, the invitation for me to leave and take space was from my wife. Okay. But that was while Jody and Ruby were friends and collaborating and doing podcasts and sure. Well, you're the, you're the custodial parent of these children. I don't see why we can't explain to you what, why we're involved. So I don't recall the exact time, but sometime before 11 o'clock today, we received uh, a phone call from 911 on our dispatch that uh, a 12 to 13 year old boy was knocking on doors in a neighborhood asking for food and water, that he was severely emaciated, that he had... What is emaciated? Mean? Skinny, scrawny, uh, malnutrition, not enough food, not enough water to sustain life. So he had... I'm sorry, what? He had duct tape on his extremities, on his hands, on his ankles, and those were covering rope burns that were used to tie him down. Take a second and think about what I just said. That's the condition of your son. Given that information, your son was taken to the hospital. A warrant has been applied and granted by the Department of Child and Family Services to remove So no one right now is going to have access to these two children based on their physical condition. Do you understand that? I understand. Do you, would you condone that behavior? Would I condone that behavior? Um, that's my job. My job is to find out your knowledge of the treatment of these, these based precious on children. No. But again, I don't know the details or I don't know what's going on, but as you described that, that sounds horrible, horrible, disgusting. No human being should be treated like that. I, yeah, okay. That's my thoughts, but again, we might be different on that. Um, We're going to let you sit here for a second, okay? We're going to go out and talk. Um, I'm not saying you're you're still not free to go. Are you under arrest? Absolutely not. We just have lots of questions that we need to figure out. Lots. Uh, okay? Okay. Because... Your, your children are under medical care right now. And what does that mean? And it means that you don't have access to them. My understanding is that they are... What is that? They're in the custody of DCFS. And they will be for the next seven. There's a medical hold on them right now. So for at least the next 72 hours, based on our understanding. At least the next 72 During observation, they're, they're being watched. DCFS is going to provide you that information, and they can better answer your questions along those lines. That's handled through them. Okay. Right. So we'll be back. So I want you to think about some things, though. I don't know. I don't know. Listen Listen to me. Listen to me. I want you to think about that for a minute. I have no idea where they're at. Well, I don't either. But, um... Okay, 
we're going to hop out here. We'll be back in a minute, okay? That's still recording audio and video, okay? So if you would, don't make any phone calls. Sure. Thank <laughs> you. Thank <laughs> you.
Thank <laughs> you. circumstances that's highly appropriate but again I, I don't know your wife I was hoping to gain some insight from you but I don't necessarily know that that's something you wanted to I trust her a road you wanted to travel down with me so it's not without legal representation yeah no, I, I get it but I love my wife and I trust my wife and so I mean this feels like getting run over by a steam truck while you're sharing with me today. Yeah. You, I can tell you're caught off guard. I thought I was just coming here to pick up my kids. And for what, I don't know what or why, but... And I was planning on taking them back with me. And just... I mean, I'd love to have a candid conversation with you. I just don't know how it's going to be received by you. I don't know you, but I can tell you my perception of how this happened. Uh, well, I'm well, interested. You know, in, not, it's... Look, I'm interested in facts, but mm -hmm. again, at the same time, I'm, I'm I'm interested in all the facts. But you understand our facts. Our facts are that you have a child that is emaciated, malnutrition, and. Has has marks. I, I didn't spend any time with her. Sergeant Tobler did. Did any of you spend time with her? Uh, mm -hmm. didn't spend time I, with I have her. not. I mean, she went to. Today. She was requested to go to the hospital along with. Based on their condition. Folks, I don't know what to do. Like, I want to s You realize that I have a picture of my family on my wall, and I look at it every day, and I work, I work every day. 
So I can back to my family and save my family. And everything you're sharing to me just sounds like a made-up story. Like I, I have no idea what you're talking about. Like it's just it sounds like a horror movie. I get it. I understand. And this is, this is my life. I just want my kids. I just want my kids. I just want my family. We want to have you I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I don't know why these things that you described happen. I, I don't know. It's almost like I want to say, I, I'm sorry, you, you must have somebody else. Because the room here. Yeah. That's what I think, like it's real, you know, I have a hard time accepting this and dealing with this. I mean you're telling me that you're taking my kids from me. We need to transfer the titles of the car to my name, you know, or um, we're going to cancel these credit cards and, and stuff like that. So just stuff related to the finances really is mm -hmm. the, our, our only communications over the past year. Sure. We, we've had zero, like zero communications regarding the kids. Okay. I've had no reason to believe or think that there was anything going on. For all intents and purposes, I woke up this morning looking at the picture of my family and making my commitment today, as I do every day, that I'm going to live an honest, a virtuous, and a responsible life today. And what you're sharing with me just feels like a sucker punch. And just imagine, Brianna, do you have... Okay. If I still have a family, yeah. and um, I, I just, um, I, I don't know what my plan. How I plan okay. to go to God? Sure. And I figure this out. Right. <laughs> I know you're 
you're all doing your jobs. And I know you all have the best interests of the kids at night. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks. That means a lot. I just want my kids back. I want my family back. I want my wife back. I don't want this to sound rude, Kevin. We've got some things to do, but we're not kicking you out. But the building's closed. Okay. You're going to be okay driving home? I really am worried about you. Okay. Do, do your best. Breathe. You've got to pull over the side of the road. And Do you drink Red Bulls? Do you want your water to go, Ken?